So uh, it is an, a beautiful day out today. It was raining most of the day. Well, not most of the day, I guess all morning. It looked like a washout and now all of a sudden it's 70 degrees and sunny. So I've decided to give my micro dwarf farm a field trip outdoors. Um, makes it a lot easier for watering and that sun does not there's no substitute, even these awesome grow lights. So these are the infants. They are confined to the indoors still. So the infants. And these are the granddaddies. I just don't have it in me to get these out today. But look how much fruit there. I'm going to do a review. This is Velma. I've shared it a few times. I was hoping to get them more loaded with um, ripe fruit. I don't know if it's all going to happen at the same time. Though. There's a lot of green. And I definitely don't want to have them all go rotten. And I want to save seeds. But... I can't believe this is the second um, the second harvest. This is awesome. But let's go see our guys outside because, oh my goodness, their puppy dog tails are wagging with happiness. And, of course, it was quite the, um, what do you call it? It was quite the effort to get them all out. But I don't care. Nothing substitutes for the sun. Look at this day. I have nothing planted in the green stalks yet because it's been too chilly. If you watched my last video, it was about how these wall of waters, one of them froze. We had a freezing night the other night. And now what, two days later, all of a sudden it's gorgeous. So I've got all my cold weather crops hardening off here. Some flowers and nasturtiums and all that. But here are my babies. Here are, this is my micro dwarf farm. Why do I have so many, you ask? Well, that is a good question. First of all, I'm a maniac. Second of all, um, because I want to do a review on every micro dwarf there is, because there are some out there that I have not seen reviews on YouTube of. So I do have doubles here, but so these are like the teenagers. These guys were all planted right around the end of January. And um, these guys, well, I guess those are like the adults. The granddaddies are downstairs. These are, these, well, yeah, the granddaddies are downstairs. These are kind of the adults. Um, the infants you just saw and these are I'm get it out of the way so my shadows out of the way these are the teenagers and some of them have been up potted already I'm trying to figure out how to up pot without stunting their growth and without taking over the entire house I've definitely taken over the entire basement so um, a lot of them I, I germinate them in these two by two bootstrap farmer um, cells. They're okay. I love bootstrap farmers. I've said many times. I, f I just feel they dry out really easily and I've got this great handy dandy um, holder which makes it very easy but man once they get a little bit big they need to come out of there. So when the weather gets nice they are all going to go, well not all of them, some of them are going to stay. Those are bootstrap farmer five inch pots which are n new and nice. Um, I have these pots, they hang, you can see I've got these hanger things, they kind of hang everywhere on my deck and I may get another green stock just for micros. So I've got some of them up potted in these six inch pots. You can see Fat Frog, I don't know if he's fat or not because he hasn't generated fruit, but this guy, one of these things is not like the other. He's big. He is much bigger than a lot of them. Um, and then look at these guys, look how adorable they are, oh my goodness. They are just waiting to be up potted in something. If I know they're a small variety and they desperately needed to come out of those two by twos, I've been putting them in these little seedling grow bags, not the big ones like I do for the regular um, tomatoes, but like this is a, this one variety's micro tom. He's a very small variety. And gosh, some of them, I was looking earlier, some of them actually have, oh, here we go. Here's a Manetka. It's got a little, the mater on there. Can you see it? Am I showing it? Get out of the way. Yeah, there he is. Um, but when they out, when they're ready to outgrow, you will you will see it because they actually grow roots through the bag. So we got a little rootage here. That's a new word I just made up, I think. Um, but they're okay for now until I'm trying to hold off on these as much as possible because they just take up a lot of room. Again, I have another. I have a bootstrap bootstrap farmer holder for um those pots which makes transport easy but man look at them that i've watered them they are soaking up the sun it is interesting and i don't know if the sun can show you but you can see the color variation in the foliage 
these yellow ones might look sickly. That's actually a variety called um, Groovy Tunes, which looks like that. Um, if you can look carefully, this one is quite a bit darker. Maybe hard to see in the sun. That one's called Tartufo, which is more of a um, anthracyacin variety. It's going to be sort of bluish. Um, and then, much to my delight, where did he go? And I don't know if it's supposed to be like this, but dark stripe and you know, everybody grows dark stripe as a micro dwarf. He's not behaving as a micro dwarf, I have to say. I had to upot him very um, quickly. But if you can see, this one has variated, fo variegated, variegated foliage, which means it's got kind of splotches on it. Um, I'm guessing it's supposed to be like that. He looks very healthy. Or, I don't know, maybe he's a mutant. Um, but some of them, most of the, the micro dwarfs, grow pretty compact. Um, but then there are some others. This is Mini Marzano, which is a new variety by Brad Gates of Wild Boar Farms. Somewhere I've got a couple Golden Hour varieties, which is, a, here's one, here's a Golden Hour. This was planted, actually this one was planted February 21st, or 22nd rather. So that's only a little over a month old. And this is another Brad Gates one. It looks super cool. Um, Looks like it's going to be sort of uh, sort of mini plum shaped green or red and yellow splotches. Can't wait for that too. So many of these have tomatoes on them. As you can see, this one is a Pinocchio orange, which in my experience tends to get uh, fruit much earlier than most. This is a Joe Chalos or Joe Halos. I don't know how you pronounce it. This was January 28th. Um, what is this guy? Oh, this is a bonsai. Nice fruit on there. So, man, oh man, I'm happy, they're happy. Look how much bigger Fat Frog is. He's like total show off. He's him I've got in my windowsill in the kitchen, but I've got others in the windowsill in the kitchen. They don't look like that, so I guess he's just a bigger variety. But I hope everybody, if you are fortunate enough, like I am in Zone 6B, to have a beautiful afternoon and are crazy enough to want to go up and down the stairs. Hey, all in the name of tomatoes, right? All in the name of tomatoes. All right, my friends. Hope everybody's had, oh, and these wall of waters that I've been experimenting with, um, they say when it's a nice day to open up the top of the teepee, which I did, and then tonight before I go to bed, we'll um, close it back up. And I did replace the one down here that died with a, another, I know it's controversial, sacrificial variety down here. Um, we had one die because the, the top opened. I found out it was because it was in a divot and uh, it, it just angled down enough where it just opened up. So hopefully that will not happen again. I think I straightened it out. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood, especially for my tomatoes. Hope everybody's tomatoes are doing great and I will talk to you soon from here in Micro Dwarf Tomato Land signing out. Peace and love. Get your gratitude on.